Welcome everyone and good evening. It's great to have you. It's been an amazing day from the moment I got up, getting out and getting active and getting my exercise in to coming in and starting to talk with the team to make sure all the plans were in place for the day. Moving forward, speaking to several of the people in the field, talking to the advisory council members that were starting an, an accountability program with and their teammates. It's been a great day doing a couple of valuations. Are you kidding me? Life is great and business is booming. I'm glad to have each and every one of you join us today because this is a wonderful presentation to discuss basically what every leader will need to do on occasion with their organization. Sometimes it's going to be the entire organization. Sometimes it's gonna be specific parts of your organization. Other times it'll be individuals that you'll need to conduct effective corings. And you know, in going through this whole process tonight, I wanted to try to simplify it the best I could to basically define what a coring actually is, its purpose, and take you through a couple examples and then finish up with some summary points and answering some questions for you this evening. So let's get started and let's talk a little bit about conducting an effective coring. So what is a coring? And so many people, you know, if you look it up, there's no such word per se. So let's define what an unfranchised coring is. And it's an activity that's conducted by the organizational leader that is used to set priorities, focus energies, um, resources to strengthen daily, weekly, and monthly tasks to ensure that team members are working to their common goals and helping them understand exactly what needs to be accomplished to get those actions that are necessary to create more success stories within your organization. And if you really think about what are we doing as we build our organizations and to lead our organization, quite frankly, it's basically to build more leaders and to create more success stories. Uh, success stories start positive gossip, which attract more people to go through the evaluation of what are we doing today. It was amazing. Um, I had an evaluation with an individual that had a Christian uh, newspaper. And this newspaper, as in most newspapers today, are having a hard time. But what's even worse is that now they don't have the people that are actually putting the ads in the newspaper. And there are also basically people that have not paid their accounts and cannot pay their accounts. So they were looking for another way to create an income stream. And, and that was my evaluation today. And it was really interesting to see how traditional business sort of just failed them based on what's happened to us unexpectedly today with the COVID-19 crisis that we're dealing with. And we'll get through that. I have all the faith in the world in happening, but I just want you to know that these things are happening all the time. And as your organization grows, we're going to need to be able to have these corings to help teammates to get past certain obstacles that they have in front of them that will help them become a success, success story. So focusing on set outcomes that are not evolving at an anticipated rate or timeline. Let's talk about that for a minute. Quite frankly, I don't know if most unfranchised owners know how fast they should be able to build their business. Now, we all know that we offer a two to three year plan in what we do, but in reality, is it 24, is it 36, is it 60 months? Because it's not from the time that you register your business does that clock start going. The time starts when you start implementing the basic five, our proven systems on a regular basis. Remember in our Getting Started Guide, and it was covered in one of our previous presentations that I recommend strongly, that we're asking 12 months of commitment from any new partner that comes into the business, part of the qualification, 
so that they can be in the business long enough doing what we do to basically see that there can be a positive outcome. Now, if I had to have an effective coring, I would begin by looking at my organization. Are they doing the fundamental business? Are they being a product of the product? Are they moving towards building their shopping annuity over a time through a process? Um, are they selling products? One of the big things right now is that sales are up because we know our health and nutrition products are spectacular. Our home and business products are spectacular as a, in our SNAP line. Uh, we also know that right now people are looking for ways to be healthy. You know, do we share the business enough in our organization? You know, did your team actually understand that this is a time that they can conduct more online evaluations than they could ever do in person because people are taking the time to get that plan B or looking for that extra stream of income? You know, selling the tickets. Now understand, while our GMTSS are not conducting physical meetings, we are now offering GMTSS, basic fives, new on franchise owner trainings, local seminars, product trainings, university major trainings at a online rate. So be sure that you promote the GMTSS online and the available tickets that are available and how those trainings are being conducted and how you can go about getting your registration for those trainings. And so these are things that you want to keep in front of you. The first things when you are going to conduct a coring, take an examination of the people in your organization. What are they doing well? What areas can they improve on? So that's very important. So when we have a coring, it's all about the accountability to the results producing activities and the supporting actions. What you don't want to do is bring people together for a coring environment, which is a exact push in a specific direction of the business to improve. So it's gotta end up with some accountability. It's an opportunity to review how to basically do that part of the business that you are establishing the coring for. Review the current results. That's sort of a hard look. And this is what a lot of people don't like to talk about. What are you currently doing? And people need to be able to have a starting point. So you have to measure those individuals with current results so that you can set new realistic goals with a timeline to receive improved outcomes. That's so, so very important. Don't just bring everybody together for a coring to make them feel good. A coring is not a team activity. A coring is a business meeting that you're bringing up a specific topic that we are just not producing enough so that you're able to create the success stories that you started out for. I hope you get that point, that's very important. Now, once you come out with that new set of goals, that new set of goals of that specific action that you're having the coring on, you have to agree to a timeline, the actions that have to be done, and the accountability that you'll expect until the next coring to evaluate the results. So listen carefully. So if you're going to have a coring, you have to come back and do a follow-up to that coring so that you can review the results. This is the perfect time for you to be more effective in your coaching because now your team or the organization that you brought together for the coring has actually done the actions and they can bring back their results and you can coach more effectively. You'll answer any questions and address any of their comments and then continue forward. So let's go through a couple examples of some corings, okay? A lot of times people come into the business and they basically live off of their auto ship. 
And every time they try a new product, they change their auto ship. I just want you to know I am totally against people going in their back office and changing their auto ship every time they want to start a new product or try a new product. That auto ship should be something that you and your family use each and every month over and over and over again. Or that auto ship should be based on specific things that you are going to sell. Now you can have multiple auto ships. So you may want to evaluate exactly how many products you use monthly, how many products you use every other month, and how many products you use once a quarter, every three months, and have three different auto ships based on what your needs are so that you are not constantly changing your auto ship. Over my career, hundreds of unfranchise owners have miscalculated and red flushed because their auto ship pulled the wrong BV amount in IBV amount. You don't want, don't want that. So let's talk about being a product of the product and building your shopping annuity. So that would be example one of a coring that I might have. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with identify and list current Market America branded products that are currently being used personally and in the household. Okay, I'm gonna start them off that way. Now, in my coring, I'm also then gonna review the home shopping list or by group, go through the shopping assessment, identifying the next products that you'll be using. So, for example, it would be very easy for you to have a coring and literally redo your shopping assessment showing the steps to everyone that you have on that coring online. That makes it very simple by simply sharing your screen. Now review the obstacles that may delay the process. What do you mean? It could be financial. It could be that they didn't run out of the product so they didn't make the order or they didn't anticipate that. Help them with whatever solutions that are possible. One of the things that I really like going over is saying, listen, today you can have multiple auto ship orders. That's why the my lists that you can do off of shop.com and even off your back office under ordering under unfranchise.com, you can create those multiple lists that you can very quickly assign to a different auto ship. And of course, it would definitely help build your shopping annuity when you're doing those types of things. Set a plan of action to overcome those obstacles. It might be generating more income from retail sales to allow the person to try those additional products. Agree to the timing that they're going to transfer and move to that process of making things happen. And then set the accountability and date of the follow-up coring to review the outcome. So in a case like this, the follow-up to this whole process of becoming a product of the product would probably be a minimum of four weeks to six weeks so that people can actually go through the process of checking their household items, seeing what they're running low on, and seeing which products that they're actually gonna start ordering and actually make the order. I want to make this very clear. I'm not asking people to throw away products. I'm asking people that when you run out of a product in your household, that you order a Market America branded product for yourself to use. And quite frankly, if it is comparable, there is no question that product needs to be part of your ongoing process of products that you use within your household. I hope that makes sense, but I'm such a big fan of the home shopping list. I'm such a big fan of the shopping assessment, especially breaking it down and going back and evaluating it on a quarterly basis. This is an area that a lot of people need to take a look at with your organizations because remember folks, our goal with every unfranchise owner is to produce 500 business volume. And that business volume is from retail sales as well as household products used. Why would you ever want to buy a product from an outside store when your store handles it? Makes sense, doesn't it? So how about example two? Building out base 10, seven strong in four to six months. 
Isn't that a dream come true for all of our organizations? Wouldn't it be great if you went back and looked at all of the individual independent contractors that became unfranchised owners and to get them to actually build out base 10, seven strong in four to six months, even if they were in the business for two or three or five years, if they've never built out base 10, seven strong, quite frankly, as a leader, have you ever pushed them to doing the business? I don't know. I've got to look at leadership if you've never pushed on this specifically. One of the things that I oftentimes have a concern about is people are doing master unfranchise owner corings, but they're not starting with step one, building out base 10, seven strong, because the master unfranchise becomes so much easier if you do step one instead of going to step two, bypassing step one. So I hope that makes sense. So this is a perfect coring example for a specific part of your organization that isn't producing or an organizational line of distribution that's not grown in months or years. So let's talk about this example too. So we're going to review what base 10, seven strong is most, most unfranchised owners may not know what that is. So let me just explain very quickly. It's nothing more than base 10 is 10 repeat customers averaging 40 business volume per month in retail purchases of market America branded products and generating greater than 400 business volume monthly. Now, didn't Dennis just say our target's 500? Well, at least you should be doing 100 business volume yourself. And best case scenario, you'll have more than 10 repeat customers. Also, when we talk about seven strong, it's seven qualified and active unfranchise owners, including yourself, serving, serving 10 repeat customers who average 40 business volume per month of retail purchases of Market America branded products generating greater than 400 BV monthly. So now you have yourself plus three on the left and three on the right, and you're now personally earning $300 in commissions, okay? Now what's the, the beauty of this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand when somebody's earning $300 in commissions a month, they're generating 2,400 business volume minimum every month. So how does that add up as the leader? It certainly helps secure ongoing commissions and residual income, but from people earning commissions. Powerful, very powerful to remember. So let's take part one and break it down, all right? So part one of example two, building base 10, all right? So as in everything, it's timeline and accountability. I'll share with what I teach. I basically teach two new customers a week over the first 12 weeks. I target 25 new customers that will yield 10 to 15 repeat customers. So let's just take a four week period. So in four weeks, my expectations are eight new customers, okay? I'm defining what we're trying to do. I'm putting a timeline in what we're doing, okay? We want to generate at least 300 business volume. That's greater than 300. Now, eight new customers averaging 40 BV on their first purchase is 320 business volume. Now, what do we have to do to make that happen? Well, we're going to have to basically make eight calls a week, set four appointments to talk about the product, or you can go out and initiate 10 trial size marketing candidates weekly, closing two to three of them to make the initial purchase. Now, why do I say that? Because we've got enough records of doing trial size marketing to know for every 10 that you put out and do it correctly, you're gonna get about 30% or three new customers out of those 10 trial size markets, okay? So what you have to do, you can't just say to your team, get new customers, gotta get 10 new, to 10 new repeat customers, okay? Without defining what is the course of action. 
And this is what the problem is with a lot of leaders out there. They're telling people what to do, but not giving them the plan that they can go out and make that happen. And so at these corings, you want to set out a recommendation, but also understand you want to also make sure they agree to the plan of action. If they don't agree to the plan of action, then quite frankly, maybe they're not gonna do it. And you know, that's another thing. You can say something, but whether or not somebody does something, unless they commit to do that, that they agree that they can do that, I think it's important that we can make these things happen. So that's part one of building base 10, seven strong. So again, determine the timeline. If it's four weeks, that's what I recommend because in four weeks you can do two product previews. Uh, I have a product preview at seven o'clock this Friday night with two of my new distributors to help them get their customers. Okay, so they're inviting customers to a health and wellness online presentation that we'll do that will sell specific products for health. So you have many options. Today with the Zoom technology, you can literally do a product preview for 40 or 50 people in a specific line that you're building. Okay, so again, just saying the coring can be great if you agree upon the action plan. Now, part two of the example is build seven strong. So what we wanna do in building seven strong, you better make sure that your team understands the prospecting, qualifying, and sponsoring process. That's step one. You can't go build seven strong if you don't know how to get number two and number three, which activates you. All right, you want to address their questions and comments. Then you want to review the steps of doing each, okay, agreed upon a plan. And you don't want to forget the sponsoring process and what's involved. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, uh, on my next session, I'll be doing uh, a session on the new unfranchise owner training tracker. Um, there are so many parts of bringing in a new partner, but at the same time, there's so many things we don't want to overwhelm a new partner with. So again, don't forget the process of sponsoring and what's involved and what they need to come away with. So don't miss that training. And if you're watching this on a recording, don't forget next week to take a look at the training on implementing the new unfranchised owner training tracker be very good. All right, so big part of just laying the foundation to build seven strong. Now we want to make sure they understand. Building three qualified and active unfranchised owners, serving 10 repeat customers, generating greater than 400 business volume in the left organization, and then three unfranchised owners doing the same in the right organization. Please understand that it could be the person building out base 10 seven strong that personally sponsor three on the left and three on the right that commit to build out base 10 seven strong in a four to six month period it could be you sponsor one on the left and one on the right and they basically one sponsors two and the other one sponsors two that they commit to build base 10 seven strong because remember we teach manage and support so you now have three on each side committed and now we're going to work with them. So how are we gonna work with them? Well, what I'm going to do is basically complete the names list. We're gonna identify the top 10 list. I'm gonna match someone to work with that individual or do it myself. If I personally sponsor someone, I am the buddy. You are the appointed buddy if you personally sponsor someone. Your personally sponsored is your responsibility to give them every opportunity to succeed. So in the case of you personally sponsoring, then you're the buddy, all right? We're gonna, if not work with that, ask a senior partner to work with you. Now this can all be done via Zoom technology, okay? Now, can you get my drift about learning how to use Zoom technology? 
then I'm going to focus on conducting two evaluations, no decision close plans per week, okay? That's really important to remember, okay? Remember what the pace is. We're going for two evaluation, no decision close plans per week. Note, this is not the follow-up or the trial run. These are your personally um, recruited or qualified individuals who are evaluating the plan, all right? So here's what we've got to remember. If we're going to talk about the no decision close, let's just walk through it very quickly. Here's the no decision close. Well, don't worry about trying to understand everything. There's just too much information to absorb at one time. It took me three times to see the plan before I realized its potential. What am I doing? If I'm doing a coring, I'm making sure that people know what we're doing here. The most important thing is that you chose the two to three year plan over the 45 year plan. That it's the important thing and the only decision you needed to make when we did the evaluation. Now, there's no big decision involved. It's not a $200,000, $20,000 or even a $2,000 decision. It's not about the money at, at all. It's about whether or not you wanna move forward with the two to three year plan. Surely you didn't know everything that you needed to learn in your first six months to a year of your job. And the same is true in this case. You actually earn while you learn. Ha! Huh. Well, there's three things I can guarantee. If you don't look, you won't find anything. And then basically, if you don't try anything, then how will anything change? And quite frankly, if you've never owned a business before, if you can't really implement this business, it's gonna to be tough to do any business. And the best thing about doing this is that it has minimal risk because you're actually trying it out. You're running a trial run. So let's talk about this for a minute, okay? You're gonna to basically, to save time, I'm gonna share with you with what most people are thinking and what to know when I share this plan with them, okay? They're thinking, is this real? Now I can answer all your questions, but you still will wanna know, will this work for me? And I think that's basically the question many people have. You know, and I have a way to answer that. However, I'm asking, are you the right person? Are you coachable? Because I'm investing a great deal of time in you in getting you up to speed to be able to create the kind of income that you're looking for. So here's how we get the answers without any risk. We'll start by getting more information and testing the market. Makes sense to me. So when you start thinking about that, you also have to be prepared when you're talking to your team in a coring, what are the recommended pieces of information? One, we all know it's going to be the digital education and credibility video. I like the MA, about MA uh, 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 thing that you get, about MA handout that it's internet driven off of our back office under the support materials. I also like to use marketamerica.com. And there's a ton of small videos and profiles that you can send to. So these are things you want to think about. Fact is, it all comes down to trying, wouldn't you agree? If you don't get more information or try it, then really you haven't chosen the two to three year plan, you've chosen the 45 year plan and that's not what we do, so I appreciate your time. Um, the trial run works real easy over the next 30 to 90 days. You're probably thanking some people who could use some additional income. And let's get some of them to evaluate the business and see if they know the right people. We'll show it for you, and at the end of 90 days, if two or four people want to do the unfranchised business or lead to the right people who would want to do the business, there is no decision, is there? We'd be nuts not to take you, and you would be nuts not to register your business. It all comes down to trying, and if you don't get more information or try it, then you have chosen the 45-year plan, and that's a fact. So it's going through the whole process, okay? We're doing it, we're talking about tying it down, choosing the dates, knowing your schedule, please know your schedule when you can do these, 
and provide them a choice of two dates for the follow-up meeting for the trial run at their location, then book the dates. Explain and sell them a GMTSS seminar ticket to learn more and arrange to attend the next online UBP or take them to an unfranchised business presentation. I say that because we're not gonna be in a shelter mode forever. We will be coming out to the public again. So you can see just reviewing something of the process, it's important to remember. Okay, going back to the continuation of Building 7 Strong, again, let's determine the interest level and book the follow-up with each prospect who agrees to move forward. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the best way that you can get an interest level if you can't get a read off of it is primarily saying, hey, Tommy, on a scale from one to five, one being not real interested, five being very interested, where would you basically rate your interest level? Okay, real simple. All right, then follow the steps reviewed in the no decision close, personally sponsor a minimum of two qualified and active unfranchised owners who commit to build out base 10, seven strong in the first 60 days. So ladies and gentlemen, this would be an action plan that we would place within our team that we were working on base 10, seven strong, but get this, the coring would have a follow-up in four weeks, then in eight weeks, because I said, building out in the first 60 days. So there's a measurement there. So don't forget, we're looking at measurements, accountability and measurements and what we do. So there's lots of different areas that you can basically have corings, you know, product preview corings, becoming a master on franchise owner, a master retailer, corings on trial size marketing, time management. So many people don't know how to schedule their 10 to 12 hours a week, okay? Um, people think that just because they think about the business that they're actually doing the business and that's not what it is. We need focus time, not leverage time. When we ask for 10 to 15 hours, we're asking for focus time as if you were going to a job, okay? We want those hours and we want to know when you're working. You can do talking in themes, attending GMTSS events online or in person or selling tickets, new product education. Man, it's unlimited about what you can do corings on. Okay, so let's just summarize this and then we'll do some questions and answers and it'll be a great night and a great thing that we can refer to back on doing corings. So, number one. Don't call a coring unless you have a distinct topic that needs to be addressed. Really important. Don't have a meeting to have a meeting. Don't confuse a team coring with a team activity. Now, one of my partners, one of our executive sales team members, Andrew Chi, he's up in Toronto, Canada. He does a great job in having team activities, keeping his team together and working together speaking the beliefs and doing the actions necessary to grow. But they're team activities. They're fun things to do. A coring may or may not be fun, especially when you examine the existing results of what's going on, and then it gets better as you move forward. Coring should have actions that can be measured and timelines. Please don't forget this. Results and accountability should be initiated after every coring. And one of the things that I have learned is make sure that the accountability and the results of what you're going to measure is agreed upon by everyone there, or at least they can have their input on what you're doing. Corings can address to a specific organization or select UFOs that have been identified. Okay, so we have multiple people that you can identify, but sometimes there's a specific organization that you want to work in because that's where your focus is. Um, other times, it's a general type of coring for somebody who needs help in a specific area. 
be careful that you do not create a dependent group upon frequency of corings, meaning don't get your team to be dependent upon your corings to know what to do. Those things are outlined are in the basic five and the getting started guide and just basically the fundamental organizational building strategies that we teach constantly at our GMTSS trainings. Our ultimate goal is to create success stories and new leadership that will result in true residual income. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what we're trying to accomplish with Corings. And I want you to remember that all of these different things that we talked about today really allow us to put us in a position to lead from the front. Remember when you're gonna conduct Corings, you also want to be able to be able to show that you're doing what you're teaching. So it's important that we all understand that, okay? So with that, I'm gonna basically stop sharing right now, and I'm going to spend some time to answer some of the questions that we have, okay? So let me basically bring up Laura, you asking, we have a running corings following the basic five, two hours each week, six weeks in a cycle, more like providing UFOs to learn. Is this a coring? Well, in reality, not really. What you're doing is inviting people to discuss different parts of the basic five training. So that's more of a team activity or a cliff notes or summary of what you're doing. I wouldn't necessarily call that a coring because it wasn't a specific action that the team was not doing. So that would be the thing that I would be thinking about. All right, so let's see. Let's see what else we have. Um, Vicki, how long, let's see. Vicki Miller, let's see. Um, how long do you work with a new distributor? Well, that's a very good question, Vicki, because a new unfranchise owner basically uh, has the opportunity to create their names list, uh, they have the opportunity to book many evaluations and product previews. They also basically deserve the attention so that they know exactly what to do for success. I basically spend anywhere from 90 to 120 days with a new unfranchise owner with a specific goal of building out base 10, seven strong. I believe by building out base 10, seven strong, basically, you're building belief and showing them that exactly how to do uh, the business. So, and that's important whenever you sponsor somebody. Okay, let's see. Is there a rule of thumb that you believe time-wise to hold a coring? I recognize that you mentioned there should be a theme. Absolutely. A coring is because of a special uh, need that your team is not implementing, uh, something that's not happening that you want to happen, okay? Uh, let's just say that your team is not booking to the next major event. Well, we should basically find out why that's happening, quite frankly, and basically put ourselves in a position that we want to, you know, help them out. How to sell a ticket. You're going to buy three tickets. How do I sell two very quickly? Well, the bottom line is, well, you got to learn how to sell them. Um, what is a product preview versus a retail event like a wellness one-on-one? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Amy, there is absolutely nothing in the difference there. Um, so you can call it whatever you want. Uh, and it works just fine. The most important thing that we want you to know is that you're taking action to express uh, how you're going to be well, uh, how you might work on your digestive system, how you might work on your weight loss, how you might work on your immune system. It could be whatever. So for example, when I do this Friday on health and wellness, I'm gonna specifically choose products that basically work with foundation of good health and a strong immune system. I think that's very important. 
okay? Uh, is it all right to do a one-on-one -on -one coring? Absolutely. Your group might be just you and one other person. And if that person is having a challenge, you need to go through and help them and then hold them accountable for running the tasks that you go through. Absolutely, Jackie, no problem whatsoever. Thomas, how do you balance main speech and team member discussion during coring? If you find yourself talking too much, it's usually too much. Um, the main speech, you know, should be in a coring, quite frankly. You should have your bullet points on what needs to be covered. You should already know your statistics on why you're teaching on that. Like for instance, if um, there was a local seminar and I have 200 people on my team in the community and only 13 came to the local seminar, that's a problem. There's a real problem there. And so you have to have a coring so that you can express the value of every GMTSS event. It's important that you, you, you do that um, because part of our business is attending the events and keep feeding the belief and bringing people with you to those events. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, so Jessica, how do I get a college students interested in attending the Zoom Corings? Well, you have to ask the college student because every college student has a different mental perspective on life, um, that college student has to be mature enough to look at the tens of millions of adults who have worked 45 years and are struggling in the next chapter of life that is known as retirement. And you want to ask that college student how it's going to be different for them. Uh, what are they focusing on? Okay, so you have to really not, you have to be very, I, I guess, politically correct in that conversation. You have to respect the college students. Um, those are Gen Z generations. We want Gen Zs in our business, but every Gen Z isn't mature enough to understand the importance of creating residual income. And understanding that a Gen Z, if they paid attention for 10 to 15 years, before they're 40, they can literally become millionaires. Um, so I don't ever understand that, but it all comes up to what we have to make available in our conversations with them. Uh, let's see. Okay. What are we looking at next? Corings are irregular meetings that you decide to have whenever. That's correct. That is correct. I agree a hundred percent. How long is a trial run typically? Great question. Uh, Teresa, thank you. A uh, trial run typically is basically, in my opinion, this is Dennis, this is not JR at this point. Um, the trial run is to prove during the qualifying period that they can lead you to more people to evaluate the business. If a prospect can prove to me that they can lead me to more people and put me in front of them one or two times, that's a trial run that wins for me. Now, ideally, it'd be great if you can do a trial run where you have two unfranchised uh, owner prospects ready to come into the business. Okay, so that's a good time to actually do it. So it could be three levels deep till you're duplicating where your prospect is now showing the plan or basically until far enough where they're proving that they're leading you to people and they're using our products. That's, that's really important. If people aren't on our products, there is no way they are done going through the trial run. To me, products are the glue that hold people to the business. Okay, all right, let's see. Let's see, will this Zoom meeting be available to view? Absolutely. Uh, just follow your back office, your unfranchise.com and scroll down, you will find out. Um, are there a lot of meetings to attend? If you want them, as much as you wanna learn, but don't become a professional meeting goer, okay? That is a direct order. You want to obtain as much knowledge as you can to do the business correctly, but you have to have time to take action. So please remember that in what we do, all right? Okay. Ah, uh, okay, good morning, Rose from Hong Kong. It's nice to have you. And also Luffy from Hawaii. I love this Zoom. This is all over the place. And you know, this is wonderful and I can't tell you how 
important it is to me uh, that you are on and that you share this with your team. <clears throat> but more important, this is a process. We have the chance to just totally change the world. I don't know about you, 28 years in, and I'm as excited as I've ever been, quite frankly. And when I think about what we do, and I think about how we can change people's lives, ladies and gentlemen, it's just amazing. Look at this. I even drink out of my own isotonics cup. All right. But when I think about what we have the power to do, whoo, man, do you know how many people go through life and don't have the power to change people's lives? And not only one, but hundreds, if not thousands, you have that power. You just have to use it. You can do this business and you can help other teammates learn how to do this business, but lead and they will follow. And I can't thank you enough. And let's keep growing and make tomorrow your best day. All right, take care.